we have a volunteer to scribe? It is a pretty important function. Uh, can't really do much until we at least get one volunteer. Uh, uh, Florent, can you volunteer to take some notes, basic notes? I can for a little bit. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to stay for the long whole duration. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't doesn't have to be very elaborate, just basic decisions that we reach. That's about it. Okay. Thank you. All right. So uh, the code of conduct, we operate under it, W3C code of ethics and professional conduct, and we're all passionate about improving what we're to see, but let's try to keep things cordial and professional. So just a few things about the tips. We're going to be managing a queue. So if you type plus Q and minus Q, uh, you'll uh, get into and out of the speaker queue. And please use headphones so that we don't have a lot of echo and state your name. Uh, I don't think we're going to need a poll, but if so, we can, we can use that. All right. So meeting and recording policy. I did send a message to the list that we are recording this particular meeting, and that's been our policy. But um, we are bringing a poll to the list to decide whether to continue that or change it. Uh, and the options are to continue to record and publish, record, but keep the um, links private, accessible to working mem members only, or don't record. So please give us your opinion by December 6th, and we'll, if we have a change in policy, we it will take effect for the December 14th meeting. All right, just a little bit about document status. Just because something's in a repo doesn't mean it's been adopted. Uh, that requires a call for adoption. And editor's drafts don't necessarily represent working group consensus. So the working group drafts do, although now with the continuous publication policy, they're pretty much the same thing, which is a little bit confusing. But it is possible to merge PRs that lack consensus, uh, but it's good to attach a note indicating what's controversial if you do that. All right, so here's what's on the agenda. We have Media Capture, Transform, Harold, and Jan Ivar. Then Elad will talk about region capture, and then we'll get into the next uh, NB use cases and face tracking stuff. All right, um, so we'll give a warning, uh, try to keep strict time so everyone gets their share, uh, and give a warning about uh, two minutes before the time is up. So Harold and Jan Ivar, you are uh, on. Thank you. So at the last meeting, we had uh, a discussion that led to uh, a, 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 I would call it the consensus that we had three things to decide about. It was uh, issues with what, what, what WG streams. It was, uh, and it was two different proposals for IP, a, API shape. If what WG streams are deemed acceptable. So we had a meeting, some of us, with uh, representatives of the What WG streams folks. And uh, uh, you, Andy, you want to speak to that uh, this slide? I think it's yours. Uh, actually, uh, it's, it's mine. I, I did a summary of yeah. the. <laughs> I didn't know where to put the slides, so I don't necessarily need to take up your time. Uh, but if people want to look it over, or if we want to, I can talk to it for a minute or two. Yeah, do that. Okay. All right, cool. So we had a meeting with the What WG Working Group uh, that covers the stream spec, and I think overall they are receptive to making readable stream work with video frames. <laughs> and uh, we've filed various issues and even discussed solutions that have been presented in those issues, uh, and I'm listing them here. I do a thumbs up to mean theoretically solved. Oh, that's not. That's mostly like a positive indication <clears throat> or a sense of that this has been worked out at least. Uh, the, the discussion seems to have uh, landed in a place where it sounds like people think this is um, solvable. Um, and then I've marked a, a number of construction hats to represent difficulty that but this is just uh, spitballing here. So. Um, 
<clears throat> in order to stream video frames, we need to solve a couple of things. We want to avoid buffering in transforms. And there's a proposal to allow a high, high watermark zero in writable streams and tra uh, transfer streams. Uh, and that seems fairly simple. Uh, but the biggest issue, remaining issue, I think, is around cleanup or like a chunk life cycle, as we often call it, which is that we want to avoid relying on garbage collection for video frames uh, when chunks are dropped uh, or when the stream is aired. And I think there are two proposals being banded about there. One is to pass those that when you're in the, in the condition where you're dropping or erroring, that you pass the remaining chunks that have been building up in queues uh, to the sink. <clears throat> and the other one, um, which is perhaps a more ambitious but better solution, might be to imagine a new um, Wabadi L type that an object can be closable, which has some parallels to his TC39 proposal uh, to expose this to JavaScript using a simple dispose method. To, and so that's a nice tie in there if we can go that route. And uh, so those are the main issues. And then at the bottom, I put in the two issues that we need in order to make T working. And that is we need to be able to clone chunks because video frame requires that. Um, and there's a simple structured clone proposal, Boolean, that would be trivial to add um, to solve that. Uh, and then the other problem is to avoid drift because two branches can uh, drift in time. And the early idea there was just to have a synchronized true. But even better would be to have a a real-time mode where we can drop chunks instead. And that would uh, be preferable, but there's some di difficulty there. If to implement that well, <clears throat> it would be simpler to do if we had the closable web IDL thing. So overall, I think uh, we're happy to see progress there. And it looks like the working group is interested in solving these. Yeah. So, that, so this, at, at the moment, we. Yes, we have issues that need solving, but uh, we're fairly confident that we that they can be solved. So we can proceed to work out how the API should work when when streams are part of the solution. Next slide. So from the last meeting, we had the comparison between the the one that the proposal that Janiva wrote up and the one that I wrote up. And we've discussed this a little in issues on the major stream check, media stream, media capture extensions repo to see what we can come up with as a possible and a possible starting point for working group further work, a document that could be ad, could be adopted by the working group and. Uh, after suitable processing by the working group, uh, be uh, called call for as a first public working draft of the working group. Next slide. So the proposed ro road forward, we document the stream space API. We document in the code that is in the YBDL, the parts that have consensus. And we add notes to reflect the parts that don't have consensus. And we ask the working group to adopt this document as a starting point and uh, aim for as little needed as possible before we're ready to call for a working group first public working draft. Next slide. I mean, this, is, uh, this does not represent the viewpoint of any organization, it depends, represents something Jan Iver and I were able to agree on. So in details, we start from the Aldostrand repo, media capture transform. We mark all the generating and consuming APIs visible to the dedicated worker, because we all agree that no matter what else, it needs to be a dedicated worker. And we modify the media stream track generator in line with Jan Ivar's video track source proposal. I mean, I don't, uh, names are subject to by backshed, but uh, the principle should be clear because that's what we seem to agree on. So we'll add the following notes that there is no consensus on uh, not adding window to visibility. There's no consensus on whether or not audio processing should be added. And uh, a note for backwards for those who want to 
are worried about backwards compatibility that they think a media stream check generator in the old name can be implemented on top of the new API and will insert some, some sample code in the backwards compatibility section or something that says, if you shim it like this, it works. And then we send out the call for adoption. And if that is successful, we will create a WGC Media Capture Transform repo based on Alice Channel Media Capture Transform. And uh, we will uh, uh, and we will uh, then proceed with the usual working group process of raising bugs and making changes until we think that this is ready for first public working draft publication. So that's the proposal. Let's hear some discussion. Uh, UN is in the queue. Yep. Uh, thanks both of you for uh, the presentation. Um, um, two, two main points. Uh, the first, I'm not clear whether audio is out or not. Uh, for what is consensus and what would be in the first uh, in in the document uh, that would be presented to working group and uh, my understanding would be that audio would be out uh, initially and I think that's 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 good. Uh, I was trying to make it clear that the code that is the ideal will say that audio is out and uh, the note will say that uh, we do not have consensus on this point. Okay, but um. And um, yeah, I'm not sure the web ideal can say uh, that audio is out for media stream track processor. But uh, if if it's if we have consensus there, then uh, I think it's it's good. Um, the second thing on uh, the stream forms, uh, my understanding was that we have the, the ear of the work uh, what work what working folks, so that's good. But uh, <coughs> we still not have like. Uh, when we asked the question, uh, are, we, are you confident that we can solve these issues? Uh, it was, uh, the answer was, we may be able to solve those issues. And uh, I, I want something stronger. Uh, and we have a meeting next week, so maybe next week we'll make progress. Uh, but I think that we, the, the answer to the question should be something like, yeah, we have a plan, uh, we need to work on it, but we're confident that we will fix the issues that you identified. And if we are getting there, then I feel confident that uh, we adopt this proposal. Domus on the queue? Uh, yes, on the what would we streams uh, discussion. Um, so I, I agree that the last meeting was uh, still, the, the level of confidence at the last meeting was still uh, maybe not as high as we want. Um, uh, I think at the end of the day, we need uh, to build the level of, of confidence on the path to solutions more than on the path to the what we do folks adopting the particular solution. I mean, at the end of the day, if the implementers want to do something that is called a WCC flow that has a characteristic we want, uh, they can do that, we can do that. Um, so I, I think really the question is, is there a path toward, uh, and, and building on what Janiva was saying earlier, I think the, the major question is really about the life cycle of uh, chunks. And so once we've convinced ourselves and ideally convinced the what with the editors, but uh, I just want to say that at the end of the day, it's first and foremost ourselves, and in particular, the implementers, uh, that this is manageable, then I think that's uh, good enough. I would go even as far as saying that if uh, the WebRTC working group and the WebRTC implementers uh, want the streams to do these things, and the pressure on these things getting done is likely to be very high, <laughs> given the interest in the technology and the particular piece we're discussing. So I, I yeah, that's my assessment of how we should um, make that evaluation. Yeah, 
I put myself in a queue there just to, to make a make an argument from the from f argument from the floor, so so to speak. That uh, uh, that uh, getting a working group item adopted and uh, getting a working draft adopted uh, does not me shouldn't be gated on all problems having perfect solutions. So I think we have reason to agree on what we experiment on and try out and uh, and uh, push forward with. Uh, and if we document that as a, as a working draft for the working group, we need to go forward with that, even while we are sorting out the other problems. Uh, Tim is on the queue. Yeah, maybe this is the wrong venue for the question, but digging into the, the closable thing, what happens if you don't close it? Like it, 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 so you're, if I understand it correctly, you're adding a, a, um, a method that needs to be called when, you, when the developer decides that they finish with this, this frame. Um, what happens if they don't call it? What happens now with the, with the, uh, the case that we're worried about is when you, when you, uh, when you crash a stream, when you disconnect it or destroy it or whatever, because in that case, there's no code at the moment that close, that is able to get at the frames to close them. So what will happen then in the, no, in the normal score of things that is that, these things hang, hang around until garbage collection comes to get them. And as we know, the time of when garbage collection is coming to get them can be highly unpredictable. And uh, if these are lim if these frames frame buffers are limited resource, then losing some is, is trouble. So so I, I'm I mean, you know, forgive me, this is probably as said maybe too too deep into the weeds here, but but I, I feel like we should we need to be very clear about what the expectations are on the developers here and and allow them to be told that they're not doing it right somehow, um, yeah. rather than just having kind of random browser slowdown or weird behaviours. Um, I'm I, I totally agree that this is probably not this is something that will crop up later, but. Um, Again, but I, I want to raise it now anyway, and now I'll leave it. <laughs> yep, good point. Let me see, that was Jan Ivar. Oh yes, I was just going to add, if, if it would help the group, uh, could we possibly also add notes to the document to mention some of these uh, life cycle issues perhaps, and would that be a way forward? It's possible. It's possible that this wouldn't wouldn't hurt. I'm not opposed to doing that, and I I, I do think that uh, bug trackers are better at tracking issues than uh, notes and documents. But we have a tradition for notes and documents referencing bug trackers. Sure. Uh, you you end. Yeah, my, my understanding is that uh, honestly, as long as we do not have a good life cycle, uh, as long as we do not have a good API that says, hey, you're the owner or you're not the owner, uh, uh, we, we really cannot make progress. Um, so I feel like I feel much more positive now that it, it will be solved. But definitely, we, we need to have. Uh, as Dom said, we, we need to be convinced that we will have a solution there. We, we, we cannot like say, hey, we might be able to solve it in a year from now. Uh, let's, let's wait for somebody to, to do it. Uh, I, I, I don't think we, we should do that. We should first state, okay, we are confident that we will solve this problem. We have this path forward. Uh, we do not have to wait for this path to actually ship in the stream uh, spec to make progress for sure. But we, we need to be confident that we will solve it. 
Yeah, to respond, I think we are confident and we have at least two solutions on the table for addressing it. So we have two, two to pick from. So hopefully one of them well, will uh, bear fruit. Well, when, I, when I had the question uh, at last meeting, uh, the optimism was very low for this particular issue. And since then, we filed issues, we discussed, and we started to, to make proposals, and I feel more confident. And I want to validate that uh, this optimism that we seem to have is actually shared by everybody. And if that's the case, then uh, that will unblock uh, a lot of things for me. Good point. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, I just wanted to make the point that um, we haven't been doing a great job of having sample code uh, for a lot of these things. And in particular, one thing I've noted, I, I, I know Yanni has written some samples, I've written some samples. It's, and I think uh, looking over the samples, we haven't always cleaned up things correctly, even in the samples <laughs> for all of the, I mean, we're doing the basic cleanups, but not for all of the error conditions. Um, so I think that might be a solution too, is, is assuming we eventually get something that can solve it, is actually have, show people how to do the right things. Uh, and they're not entirely obvious because there's a lot of error conditions you can have. You know, um, you have to respond to uh, cancels and all of that and make sure you clean everything up. Um, so that's just my comment. You know, my first experience with uh, trying to use streams for something, I wrote, I wrote a code that uh, tried to trans to, to to detach a stream from its sink and attach it somewhere else. And that was after the spec had been adopted and had been out for a while and there was said to be production code available. It turned out not that none of this, none of the code out there actually implemented what the spec said that should happen in that case. It didn't work. So, uh, and having the API to experiment on is uh, definitely good for demonstrating uh, situations in which bad things can happen. To, to uh, echo what Bernard said, I, I think that in the examples when I ran them, I think that I saw sometimes a console log messages in Chrome stating, hey, this video frame was uh, garbage collected. Please don't let do that. Because yes, you that's, you a, do. that's what I was referring to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and you can actually feel the browser get sluggish until the garbage collection happens, which means that, yeah, stuff's being leaked. Yeah. And Ben Wagner notes in the chat that please file bugs when you, when you see those because uh, he's in charge of the, of, of the, of tracking, uh, of, tr of tracking the, those samples. Yeah. Yeah, actually part of the problem is that, um, the samples involve multiple APIs, so they wouldn't just be, there's not a lot you can do just with media capture transform, right? You, but uh, samples showing the whole pipeline, I think would be useful. I'm not sure where they ought to go, but they'd also involve web codecs and probably a web transport or a whole bunch of stuff. So yeah, anyway. We, we have uh, samples uh, involving web codecs. We don't have samples involving web transport yet, but as you say. Yes. So, uh, it, uh, <laughs> these cross multiple specs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we, do we get, um, I guess the basic items here in terms of conclusion is I think we're going to do a call for adoption, right? Is that yeah, correct? If, uh, uh, I, I have not heard anyone object except, uh, well, UN has been warning yeah, I, us that we might not succeed, but uh, I don't. I, I, I think the idea is first that there's a document that is edited, right, with the changes that you mentioned, and then it's been it's presented or then there's a call for adoption. But I don't think the idea is to call for adoption the current uh, draft. No, I have not made it. I have not made the changes to the draft yet. Oh, okay. okay. So the first step is to make the changes for the draft, <laughs> yeah. and then I guess announce that on the list. And then the second thing would be a call for adoption of that thing when it's when it's ready. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, so and I, would, the, I would tend to uh, wait the next uh, working meeting next week. Uh, yeah. Well, I don't think any of that is happening instantaneously anyway. So the waiting, the waiting, we're very very good at UN. <laughs> <laughs> We, we, we exceed at that. 
Yeah. Okay. So I think I think we have the a action items for the for the minutes. All right. So uh, now I think we're ready for a lot. Yes. Hello. Um, Back on time. Yes. Uh, can everybody hear me well? Yes. At least one person. Okay. Uh, so uh, thank you very much for your time. And here is uh, what I'm going to be presenting about today. It's region capture. Uh, we discussed this a few months ago, and now I'm going to reintroduce the subject. Um, so imagine that you've got one tab running an application that's actually composed of two composite, two, uh, a composite of two applications. For example, you could have a presentation and a video conferencing application merged into one, uh, which would have been convenient, for example, right now, right? Uh, so in this case, um, you would want the, you would want to have a button share the presentation. You click that button, you capture the current tab, but then you don't want to transmit everything remotely, but rather you want to crop it only to a content area, right? So in the example that we have here, on the left, we've got the presentation, and you don't even want all of the left side, you want a subsection of that, because you, maybe you don't want to take the speaker notes, for example. Uh, so obviously, we would want an API that would allow you to do that in as normal. You would want to be able to do it performantly, robustly, and ergonomically. Uh, and robustly, uh, note that the user might change the size of the window, uh, might scroll, might zoom, and things, and there could be layout changes. And whatever you, way you choose to decide, you choose where to crop to, that needs to update really quickly so that you don't miss crop some of the frames. Because if the other, if the remote users, if remote users see the, your speaker notes, for example, well, that's, that could be a bit embarrassing and for the user and if they can see their own videos again well that's embarrassing for the application for not having the appropriate level of polish so we want to take care of those now note that in this example it is not it is intentionally unclear whether the presentation is the top level document and it embeds the video conference the other way around or something different altogether and i claim that a good api would not actually care about that any kind of application, whichever way it construct uh, it structures itself, would be able to use a good API. Next, uh, next. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so I just want to take a step back and let's just remember that it is currently possible to already get the current tab. Right? There are you can call Get Display Media, and if the user wants to share the current tab, they can uh, choose the current tab. You can also do that with an extension. And hopefully, in the somewhat near future, get viewport media will be yet another way that you can get that. So we take this as an article of faith that the user already started capturing the current tab, allowed the, or rather allowed the application to do that. Uh, and when that happens, the application gets absolutely all of the pixels here, right? And we are just trying to give it a way to cut that, to opt into removing that. Next slide, please. And maybe one more. And I just uh, want, because uh, some people I've spoken to about this have misunderstood, I want to make it very, very clear that I'm not proposing an API by which the, the captured content will decide, uh, will be able to censor what can actually be captured. Uh, the, sensor, the captured content is not the controller here. And if anybody wants to suggest some kind of uh, mechanisms for, for such control in the future, uh, be my guest, but that's not part of the current proposal. Previous slide, please. So um, when we uh, speak about this, you might ask, OK, but why do we need a new API? I mean, pixels are frames. Uh, frames contain pixels. Frames can be edited. Just do that by the application. And I claim that. This would not be nearly as good. Uh, first of all, performance, I hope that it does not need much elaboration to say that the browser can do that a bit better, uh, because the browser can do that before it starts shuttling it, you know, from, in the case of Chrome's architecture, from the browser processor or GPU process, uh, 
to the render process and then you send smaller frames, you've already uh, gained some performance. So that's kind of a given and there could be other arguments there. Robustness is the key, key point. And as I mentioned, when you scroll, when you zoom, when you change the window size, any way, um, if you've got multi, uh, multi, multiple documents in the tab from different origins, they're in different processes, for them to start communicating, oh, I just got scrolled, so my new, actually, you might want to use those coordinates instead. Uh, we've looked into a couple of those solutions and none of them was, uh, none of them uh, was able to actually produce a guarantee unless it really, really sacrificed the other two points, performance and ergonomics. So if you start communicating all between the various documents about every single frame and you delay transmitting it remotely until you've gained some kind of confidence that it is from before any kind of scroll event, et cetera, happened, maybe you can work around this. But if you want all three, the browser needs to step in. And ergonomics, uh, you know, I've just spoken about, but obviously if there is an API and it's not too complicated to use, that's easier, that's easy for the application. Uh, next slide, double X, uh, 2X, please. Thank you. So, um, so one more thing to, uh, to look at here, and I think I've already mentioned that, is that we don't really want to crop to an iframe because you might want to crop to some div or some other thing inside of that iframe. So whatever, when you call get display media from document X, you might want to uh, actually crop to something that's deeply nested several iframes in. Next slide, please. So I propose this uh, API, which I hope is relatively simple. Uh, and I later I will explain some of the key design decisions here. But basically, when you want, um, let's when you want when there is something you know you might want to crop to. You've got some kind of content area. Let's say that everything goes in a div. You call pr uh, produce crop ID on that div. You get uh, some kind of token. For string, you pass that on to uh, whichever. Uh, you can post message it, you can do whatever, or maybe you're even inside of this very same uh, document. You give it to whoever has the track and they call crop to on the track and give that ID. So next slide, please. So here, I'm, maybe I should have actually done this. So imagine that in the capture, uh, in the capture target, so in our case, it would be in the presentation. It knows there is some main content area that does not contain the speaker notes. So it says, okay, produce a crop ID for that. And then it just gives the crop ID to whatever. So send crop ID, the third line here, it might just be in direct call to start crop target capture if it's everything is in the same document, but otherwise uh, it could be a post message to a child iframe. Uh, it could be anything. And then uh, on the capture inside, which again could be the same or could be different. You just call uh, on the track, you call crop to crop ID, and then it starts cropping and it keeps on tracking uh the size so whenever the div gets relayed out on stuff like that uh it just keeps that and for every single frame the frame is um cropped uh exactly to the, those coordinates uh next slide please so you might ask um okay why not coordinates i think i've covered that uh you might ask um Yeah, so sorry, I, this one I think we've uh, fully covered. So I, uh, so one more thing, you might say, hey, it's really nice, but you know, who told you that whatever you uh, you called produce crop ID on is even rectangular, in which case I say, that's okay. In that case, we'll just take the bounding box of whatever. And this is not really the intended use case. Uh, applications that, you know, it's a tool. When you get a tool, you should use it sensibly. If you use it unsensibly, there will be some kind of very, uh, clear uh, explanation of what the browser is going to do, but uh, you do that at your own peril and you're not really going to gain anything from, you know, doing silly things and good luck. Uh, so let's, for the rest of the discussion, I think that we can pretend that the, that we've got a simple rectangular uh, target. Next slide, please. Uh, now you might ask, okay, but why crop ideas? And uh, the answer is that 
you might want to go several iframes deep, right? And in this case, you don't actually have an HTML element that you can give to crop to because it's in a different document. And, um, and if you, for some reason, if we decide that it's really uh, much more ergonomic to actually call crop to uh, on an HTML element, then we can always implement that as yet another, as an overloaded uh, uh, interface, right? That just behind the scenes just produces a crop ID and immediately calls uh, crop to on top of that. So one can be implemented in terms of the other, but not the other way around. So I think that's okay. Next slide, please. Uh, here, you might want to say, okay, okay, but but why not just transfer the tracks, right? Like produce a track, transfer it to whatever you want to crop to, call crop to on that, transfer it back. And I would claim that that's not really ergonomic or safe. You're kind of pushing applications towards a pattern in which they kind of transfer a track that, you know, remember, can actually capture the entire uh, tab at any given moment. And you pass that through several other documents and I don't think that's safe. I think that it's much, much better if you just say you trust embedded content to just kind of hand you over a crop ID that would be meaningless if it's wrong. And if they happen to guess it or, you know, get it, that's not a problem, right? But then actually giving them the track and therefore access to all of the pixels on the screen, uh, on the tab. Uh, next slide, please. And last, uh, there are two promises. Uh, if we actually go back a couple of slides, I'll tell you when to stop. It's the slide where I show the interface, uh, the, the, my proposed API. So should be slide number 22. So here we've got two promises. And I think that the second one should be relatively simple when you call crop two. You get a promise that tells you, okay, when this promise resolves, uh, cropping is actually going to take place because in uh, before that, you might get a couple of frames that are cropped, either uncropped or cropped to whatever target you set previously. Because remember that you could also change targets whenever you want, right? So when this promise resolves, you know that cropping has uh, been updated. So for example, you might want to actually, you know, start uh, transmitting uh, frames remotely only at that point. Uh, produce crop ID also returns a promise, and the reason is that um, basically uh, in the implementation for uh, Chrome, we're going to produce those IDs on the browser process, not in the render process, and that's going to take some time. And all of this propagation of state needs to take some place, and I imagine that uh, Firefox, Safari, you might have uh, similar architectures where you would not want to promise that you create the ID immediately, but maybe Maybe you do, maybe you don't. It's nice to have the uh, ability to do so a bit later. Uh, I am just about done. So I think that um, it's a perfect time for a plus Q. Plus Q. Um, UN, I think you were first. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so a couple of observations. Uh, first, uh, for the iframe thing, you, you can use message channel and message sports to do uh, transferable and it, it should work. So there's no no issue there. Um, if the issue about transferable is that, uh, so you, you call um, get display um, viewport or get viewport media, and then you're blocked on a, a given element uh, after transferring it, I think that there are solutions to make get viewport media uh, more dynamic there by uh, using, uh, for instance, element decoration, and you you pass the element decoration to uh, get viewport media, and then you can change, uh, you can decorate the elements, and and this will be very dynamic, and you can just use message port then to ask the capturing uh, iframe to change its decoration, and that should work fine without any IDs. Um, so. Uh, the, this uh, this dives into uh, one design decision, and so first of all, do I understand that everything else you agreed with? Uh, I'm agreeing just with what I said. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm, I, it was mostly a joke. Uh, so um, 
I would say first, uh, we don't want to only use this for Get Viewport Media. Get Viewport Media is still in the future. People are using Get Display Media, and we would like this to work with that as well. That's number one. We want it to use, uh, work with extensions. That's number two. So all of these should work. Uh, um, so changes to Get Viewport Media are a bit out of scope here. Uh, third is that after we hopefully get to this point and we say we manage to get this uh, standardized, I would like to also offer that, hey, why should why only for the current tab? What about the next tab? What if I've captured from a meet.com uh, tab, I capture the slides.google.com uh, tab? I could communicate there too. So in that case, I do get need to something. Media again. I'm sorry? No, I call get report, if, no, but I want to call it media from another tab and tr transfer it yes. to another tab. And yes, then so, you're so, good as well. It's it's working the same. No issue there. Yeah, that is uh, that means that we will wait several years until all of those things are done, and we will not make progress. As mentioned, we have started this discussion of region capture a few months ago, and uh, you know applications want to use that in the foreseeable future. I, I understand that uh, this pro the the main benefit I see from this proposal is that it, it will it would apply to get display media. Uh, mm -hmm. equally to get report media. That's uh, that's a clear advantage. And uh, I haven't thought of ideas uh, that would allow you uh, to get to the same uh, kind of uh, feature level uh, by not using group IDs. Maybe IDs are needed for that. Uh, uh, I would need to, to think a little bit more there to know for sure. Sure, I, I would love to also be in contact if you are um... If there are any other uh, considerations that might uh, change your mind or change my mind, uh, there were more people in the queue. Oh uh, yeah, next. Um, so one thing I'm not clear about is uh, so you target this element. What happens if that element is no longer visible to the user? Is it still being captured? And if so, is that something that might uh, spook uh, users? Yes, so uh, thank you for asking that question. Uh, so I will answer that specific question, but beforehand I will say that because of the limitations of time, I have not presented absolutely everything about the proposal. There is a spec draft on my own, uh, uh, on my own GitHub page. Uh, I will link to it. Um, uh, actually, you can just look it up. It's El Adalon 1983 uh region dash capture and all uh, of the edge cases i could think of are addressed there and specifically for this one what happens is let's say that the user scrolled or that the application kind of removed the capture target and then we just mute the track and if that comes back into view then you unmute the track thanks Uh, Can I say just one more thing, oh, maybe? Yeah, I, I just want to mention as well that uh, adding features like cropping to get display media, uh, we we know that uh, capturing get display media uh, browser tabs is uh, a very sensitive thing, and we, we want people to move away. And uh, if we add support for get display media, then uh, we they might stick to get display media while there's the get report media which is safer so um the more we provide benefits in get report media and the, the less there is in get display media the, the safer the web is and that's important to keep in mind uh, i agree and thank you but i think that it has been round about one year since we first dis uh, started discussing get viewport media in this time, a lot of people are using uh, screen sharing, and it is important for to address uh, some of their concerns and some of the things they need, and not only keep the eyes on the fu distant future. Uh, Yaniva? All right. So, uh, well, first, thanks for uh, uh, Elan for presenting this. I think uh, you're capturing a problem that we should solve in the sense that, um, I mean, we, we just earlier in the same meeting here, we discussed media capture transform where you could actually 
do this kind of cropping in JavaScript, but I think you make a good point that we want to be able to, it's not so much performance, but that we want to be able to uh, not have a disconnect about accidentally uh, oversharing anything. So I, I like that we're solving the underlying problem. I had like three specific asks of things I would like to change in the API. I hope that's not too going too deep. Uh, one is I think we should avoid the name. Uh, we should avoid ID at any API that we add uh, or otherwise suffer the wrath of the ping working group descending on us. Uh, Could you say that again? I'm sorry, I, I didn't get that. Uh, using the word ID or exposing an ID is usually mm -hmm. something that the ping working group uh, looks um, that might invite a lot of scrutiny, um, fair or otherwise. Um, and I would actually propose that uh, instead of using a string as an ID, that we add an interface. Uh, and I think you and I have talked about this. Uh, having uh, if the ID, if we could use the element itself, if it were transferable, I think we would have that it would have seen obvious. But all we need here is a handle that uh, can be moved around as a placeholder for the element, as a reference to the element. But it doesn't need to uh, leave the user agent at any point. So having it be an interface. Um, let's say I produce a uh, hundred IDs, a thousand IDs. If they're strings. The use agent has no way to know when it can forget about them. But if they're interfaces, uh, they can be garbage collected. So we don't need to keep track of them anymore. And having an interface would also uh, assuage any concerns about the string ID uh, leaving the browser and coming back uh, and being an ID from somewhere else. Um, um, so, one part I. <clears throat> Uh, sure. Is it okay if I answer this one, or would you like to, or do they kind of tie in together in a way that you would like to present all of them together? Um, well, let me mention a third one. The, the third one would be, and maybe this isn't popular, but would be to use apply constraints for this, uh, because we already have uh, constraints for cropping, constraining the image, if you will, in width and height and resize mode. So my, I would have questions about how does this cropping interact with those things, and also apply constraints uh, returns a promise. And it also conveniently is an API both on the track as well as on get display media and probably even the future get viewport media. So it would be accessible perhaps where you could, uh, for instance, in your current example, you have to, you get the track and then you crop it. So does that mean that if you assign it to a source object, is there a moment where it's uncropped, for example? Uh, so I yes. think, yeah, that was my last point. Uh, well, yes, uh, but that's why crop to returns a promise. So if you wanted to, you could just wait until you get it. You call crop to, you wait until the crop to promise resolves. And then when you put it into a source object, it will never yeah. produce any pre-crop uh, things. Uh, it might. However, JavaScript might not know to do that because it happens to work on the developer's browser. And then in the field, maybe there's different timing and then suddenly uh, if they didn't do that, if they didn't catch it, there might be an oops. Uh, I agree that uh, tools that cannot be misused are better. Uh, there is a trade off there. I think it's kind of um, it's difficult for me to imagine uh, a developer to that calls crop to end imagine that it just happens immediately, especially if it returns a promise. But uh, we can discuss that uh, in terms of using apply constraints. I uh, I don't think that anybody is happy with constraints. Constraints are already very, very complicated, and I don't think that we would be making the prom problem any better by leaning more into it. Uh, additionally, as far as I know, apply constraints currently uh, does not guarantee that the promise only gets resolved when uh, the constraints actually, you know, when frames, all subsequent frames are guaranteed to be according to that, but rather it just says, okay, you resolve when you when you know it's okay, right? Uh, and we, if well, we change the meaning of the promise, we could, uh, things could go a bit unexpectedly. And especially given that constraints are such a vast field, you know, making sure that absolutely every single one of those actually applies to the next uh, frames, that might end up being a bit more difficult implementation wise than we uh, initially envisioned. But I, I would, uh, I, you bring up a good point about apply constraints, but it's also a promise. And it's perhaps underspecified when apply constraints should resolve, whether it should uh, wait to ensure and provide the guarantee that effects have been applied at that point. I think that's a good idea. I think we should fix apply constraints. 
Otherwise, you end up with timing issues. Let's say I want to crop to a different element, but because let's say I'm changing from cropping element A to element B, but because element A and B are different sizes, I'm also going to apply a different um, scaling, downscaling to them using apply constraint. So now you have to coordinate crop to with apply constraints. But if they're all in one, uh, there's a single promise, there's a synchronization point. Yeah. Sure. Uh, would you um, be, yes, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I, we have uh, about 15 minutes late in the, uh, left in this segment. I'm just wondering if um, we understand what the action items are. I don't want to go too deep into the proposal. Just to, I want to understand, you know, what are the next steps forward and make sure we get that into the minutes and uh, are clear about that. Are you asking for something, the working group to do something a lot? Um, I guess at this point, I'm mostly trying to understand what uh, people's positions are. And if I understand correctly, it is that it is a, a problem worth solving. Uh, any objection here? I guess not. And um, it is uh, unclear to me if these are discussions over optimizing the uh, the API or whether the, any of those concerns are blocking for the people who have raised the various uh, issues. Yeah, I'd like to invite comment from uh, the working group at large as to uh, rather than just a few people. Um, so Tim is next on the queue. Yeah. So um, I like this. Uh, I, I've got a use for it today, um, yesterday, the day before. Uh, so, I mean, I, I, I think it's a, I think we should be doing this and we should be doing this expeditiously. So I'm kind of, uh, I see the, the merit in potentially not waiting for other things. Um, and I think specifically around the, I like that, I mean, I take the point about not calling it an ID, but, but I like the idea of it having, of it being an opaque token of, of some sort, either interface or string. Um, because you can have multiple of them, so the 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 um, the the, uh, the application that is 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 being um, uh, uh, being captured um, can have can offer multiple things, and then the capturer can can switch between them in a way that's convenient. So you you capture the whole area, and then you say, okay, well, I'm going to zoom in on on Fred, or I'm going to zoom in on the slide. Um, or and, and, and again, in the application I'm I'm working on at the moment, that would be really useful. Like I, I want to be able to crop the crop things off and 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 move change things around, and not having to round trip to the other application to say, hey, would you mind changing the stream that you're sending me? Uh, even though it's exactly the same, like the it's capturing the same tab, but I want to change the cropping area to a different uh, thing. I think being able to do that really quickly and easily is is a merit of this being an opaque token rather than transferring a stream. So I, I, I do like this and I think it's a, um, you know, it could, there are probably some, some detailed improvements uh, along some of the Yanova lines, although I'm, again, I'm not fond of constraints, although we would have to document how this interacts with them, but, but in, in general, I'm in favor. Um, that's a long way of saying that. Uh, Thank you, Tim. Uh, and uh, obviously, I'm very happy to hear that. Uh, quick question. Uh, if I understood correctly, you said that you were also in favor of uh, using uh, an interface rather than strings. And I would like to ask both you as well as Yanivar, uh, what are we trying to guard against? Because it seems to me like if the string escapes the user agent and comes back later, like what does it really matter? I mean, the, the user agent will just recognize it as an unknown string. I think I, I'm that's... Gonna, I'm going to speak for, for Yanivar as well here, which is that what we're trying to avoid is ping. Um, uh, it, it, we're trying to avoid a long discussion about that these, that these strings are safe. Um, I, and we may be wrong. Okay, we, we may think they're safe, and then you'll find a, um, a sneaky crypto guru who will tell you that they're not for a reason that we hadn't thought of. So, like, if they can't escape the browser, then that conversation doesn't crop up. My so it's, it's about avoiding the conversation rather than being, you know, actually 
having a specific risk. Uh, I Thank understand. You. I, I appreciate. I appreciate that uh, sentiment, and uh, but and I would not push back on it at all if not if it weren't actually blocking my uh, next proposal, which would be okay. But allow this to also ha work when you capture another tab. And when I capture another tab, I want it to be relatively easy for the other tab to just export some kind of message saying, hey, here's an ID. I know, not an ID. Here's not an ID that you can use to capture to some interest section, in, uh, points of interest in me. And it seems like anything that's not a string needs to at least be able to be convertible to a string for that to happen. And the moment you do that, you're slowing down the adoption of this API. So, so my advice would be to, to make it an interface and then worry about how you're going to stringify it later. Um, I, if, I'm open if you're to interested that. in speed. I'm open to that. Uh, thank you, Tim. I accept that answer on my behalf. I think we have Bernard on the queue. Yeah, um, I, I was going to uh, mention something along the lines of what Tin said, which is very often we talk about opaque tokens, which turned out not to be so opaque. Um, and the the question of how you exactly you specify them and whether they're implemented uh, the same in every browser is kind of tricky, and often the differences can can leak privacy information more than you might think. So. Um, you know, just because something, I'm sure Ping will want to get into the details and that'll be a long conversation and uh, avoiding the conversation is worth something. Um, and, and Ping often brings up conversations that even when you don't think there should be any, so uh, there might be more here than, than you might think. Uh, sure, uh, I would just mention that uh, I was thinking of using a UUAD, uh, which at least would have resolved some uh, compatibility issues, I think. But if you think that uh, using something completely opaque, yeah, okay, I see uh, a chat message. And uh, we can, Dom, would you like to take, grab the mic and explain why not? Or maybe this is out of scope? Uh, in the interest of time, I think we should uh, not dive into this. But yes, you ideas are one of the specific pain points for ping because they can be used to identify users coming back to a website. So. Right. Um, so one of the, um, I'm so, sorry. About uh, just, I mean, again, for for your own benefit, I, I think that's a discussion that is worth having in an issue. Uh, what exactly is the token that is used to transfer the crop, cropped region? Uh, and it may be that we are, you know, over concerned about this, and you're right, but, but I don't think we are going to solve this, and I don't think we need to solve this for your purpose. Uh, it's uh, I understand there is a phase two that you're worried about, but but to Tim's point, I think you should uh, let's let's figure out phase one first before. Uh... Uh, sure, I, I just want to give you the pleasure of being able to say we told you so uh, in a bit, and say that I would be surprised if uh, Pink would find something here because this UUID would be. Uh, produced uniquely for the element and not outlive the session in any way. If you reload the tab, you would get a new one. And you will tell me, uh, we told you so uh, when I find out why I was mistaken. And um, it's going to be fun for everybody involved. Uh, but but sure, I, I can just avoid the discussion instead. And we can revisit it when we want to start cropping to another tab. Yes. I was in the queue, and I just wanted to say, if we go down with API talks, I plus one for abstract handle, minus one for uh, apply constraints. We should not go there. And uh, with regards to promise, to returning a promise when the capture has changed, uh, it's a difficult topic, uh, both for apply constraints and for this particular API. So uh, the only thing that you can guarantee is that uh, at the time the promise is resolved, the next frame is, of course, uh, the capture has changed for the next frame, but capture might have changed already for the previous frame. And you, it's very, very difficult to, to guarantee uh, uh, things there. Maybe yes. with the mega capture transform, we will be able to get there, but it's in general, it's very difficult. So the intention is not for the promise to say all of the previous uh, frames uh, were cropped this way or that way. Like we, we only guarantee that 
after the promise resolves, you will not get any more frames that were uh, kept, uh, cropped to the old one, right? You might never get another frame ever, uh, but if you do get any one, it will be cropped to either the new one or to an even later uh, crop target. That's the promise. That's and this yeah. re these nuances are kind of reflected in the spec draft uh, in a bit more rigor. So I don't see anyone on the queue, queue but a quick uh, question. Actually, Harald is on the queue. Uh, I'm on the I'm oh, queue. Sorry. So just pointing out that uh, if, you if you have an interface, either it's serializable or it's not. If it's serializable, it's a string in disguise. If it's not, it's a token or a symbol or whatever. Uh, and as Dom uh, says, uh, transferable or serializable in that regard, it's, sorry, I mean, I mean stringable, not uh, serializable. Uh, uh, as Dom said, uh, serializable is uh, useful for moving stuff around within the browser. I do worry that uh, we that uh, we are building the org charts, not the uh, best technology we have, if we are making a, a decision that affects usability on the basis of we don't want to discuss with certain working group chairs. It's not what we should be doing. And new IDs are fine as long as they can only be type 4 and you kill them fast. That's my comment. Uh, I agree, and I think that uh, they naturally will live only like they are randomly assigned. And then when you reload the page, if you even try to produce the same one for the very same element, you will just randomly assign a different one. So I think that satisfied the condition that the requirement you've just cited. There is a privacy risk. Uh, but, uh, um, there is some. I would, I would, but that, that's a longer discussion. So um, what are the next steps here? I think we have four minutes remaining, and I want to make sure we, we understand what to do next. And what do we write down in the minutes? Um, as far as I'm concerned, if you all vote to make this a working draft, I would vote OK. But uh, you probably uh, want to specify something a bit lesser than that as the next step, right? Okay, so are you suggesting that the next step is a call for adoption or not? Probably not. Uh, so I'm call, not. I'm calling on people more experienced than me in matters of your, um, of the process here to tell me what the next step should be. I think well, the next I step think, for, uh, is in standard space. It has to be called for adoption. Hmm. And apart from that, it's just opinion. Opinion. I mean, it, we haven't I mean, heard anybody who said go ahead, that it shouldn't be adopted. Have we? Is there somebody? Who... Well, I've heard clearly support for the use case, uh, some shape concerns, but there are ways. <laughs> Shape concerns. Um, so I guess a call for adoption might just be in order, although it would be useful if people think it's too early or if they want to think more about it and raise issues beforehand. Or... Can we have a call for review prior to adoption? I'm just trying to understand uh, how we get something before the working group and you know, get the, get the comments out on the table as opposed to waiting from there for them, you know, to show up 14 months from now or something. Um. Well, could we have a, a call for adoption of a document that has been updated to use an interface instead of string? Is that a blocking concern? Because I think <laughs> it's unclear to me if we've uh, uh, finalized that discussion, but that seems like something that could be easily changed you know, with a PR. Well, yes, uh, perhaps, but uh, I don't 
the use cases you have presented do not require strings. So I think uh, it, I would say need we, to be, it we, needs to be serializable because you need to be able to post message it to another iframe. Yes, but serial, you can have things that are serial, serializable in the browser and still opaque. I see. Um, if I do not find that the, if I do not find that this is a problem, then that would not be a blocking concern for me to to stop it being a string. So that's okay for me. So yeah, the only other thing I would perhaps push for was apply constraints, but I hear UN was not very fond of that. So uh, I'll concede uh, that we probably won't be able to do that. I have some concerns with interaction, but uh, other than that, I don't see a reason we shouldn't uh, try to resolve that within GitHub issues. Okay. Um, um, what, what I yeah, go ahead, uh, Tom. Well, I, I was going to ask uh, Elad. You're also referring to serve as uh, an editor for that document. Uh, should it be adopted? Uh, I'm sorry. Could you? Uh... You, you you are also referring to serve as an editor of the document. Should it be adopted? Yes. I'm asking because we have more documents than we have editors, so <laughs> I don't want us to commit to. Uh, I understand. Uh, you asked officially, and the answer officially yes. Okay, so I guess in the interest of time, uh, we'll confirm this with the chairs uh, after the meeting. But, but I guess the next thing might be a call for adoption after a, a short update on your end, Elad. Uh, Okay. If you can uh, set up the token thing. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So we're moving on to the next uh, work item, which is uh, WebRTC and the use cases. So it um, seemed apropos to have a little quote from Lewis Carroll. Uh, Alice asks, would you tell me, please, which way I ought to go from here? And that depends a good deal on where you want to get to, said the cat. Well, I don't much care where, said Alex. Then it doesn't matter which way you go. So a little bit of the history of WebRTC and the use cases. I looked up the first public working draft was December 11th, 2018. And that was, it seems like a very, very long time ago. So 27 months before the pandemic began in March of 2020 and 28 months before the first public working draft of Web Codex. So Web Codex was at that point uh, still a gleam in the eye of a, of a few folks. But um, and since then, uh, a lot of things have happened. Um, just thinking about all of the communications technologies that have reached the mass market since then. Uh, podcasting. I'm told that something like three quarters of the people in China listen to at least one podcast a month. Uh, video conferencing, we've all seen these enormous increases in the usage of video conferencing during the pandemic, but also video streaming services were not entirely mass market prior to the pandemic, uh, but they most certainly are now. Uh, game streaming services weren't, uh, were just on the verge of being launched or small scale before the pandemic, and now they're, they're widely used. Uh, Large-scale webinars and online classes of 100,000 people, and now some services are claiming up to a million participants uh, in these things. And then online performances, you know, a lot of uh, musicians haven't been touring, so they're having live concerts. So all this stuff has happened since we had a first public working group draft. So all this raises some questions is, does the current document reflect what the industry cares about? Secondly, does the document reflect the current state of technology? We've had uh, considerable technology advances since the first public working draft. And the third thing is, um, is the, are, the, are we on track to actually enabling the use cases that we have, uh, let alone perhaps the, the ones that uh, the industry is interested in at this point? So I thought we'd review what we've got in the document just to refresh everybody's memory, but also to look at where we are given the things that we've got in the document and then ask uh, some of the questions again. So we have three existing use cases and by existing what we mean are uh, these are use cases that were in the original WebRTC use cases document that perhaps we think uh, we can do a little bit better. So three of these sections one, 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 two, uh, 
two one, two two, and two three. Um, and just some observations. What I try to do here is characterize the type of requirements. I'm not listing them all, uh, but um, one of the things is that there aren't many API proposals that actually address these existing use cases. So we have uh, WebRTC SVC and WebRTC ICE, and that's about it. Um, the section 2.1 and 2.2 use cases have quite a few ICE requirements. So uh, they, they reference ICE a lot and things we need to do to make ICE better to enable these use cases. Um, the other thing is looking at these three existing use cases, I guess video conferencing certainly has become mass market. But um, the other two, you know, a lot of things have happened during the pandemic. I don't know that mobile calling services are, are the next big thing or uh, we certainly have game streaming. Uh, I don't know uh, the multi-party with voice communications, how big that is. Um, so it's a question about whether these use cases are actually compelling. Uh, are the ICE requirements real? Like have the fact that we've not done much on these ICE things, is that really constraining the adoption of WebRTC? Um, and if it is, are those addressed by the WebRTC ICE document or, or not? Um, and the other thing is in the video conferencing space, um, I would note that we've got web codecs now, so there are multiple ways of adopting, of, of addressing this particular use case. You could do it using extensions to WebRTC, but there's quite a few extensions that are required, and we don't seem to be actually proposing those extensions. So the question is, uh, is there an alternative way to go about this via web codecs, and should, should we have been considering those requirements? Um, uh, and not just not just a, the WebRTC extension approach, which seems to be what the document is focusing on. Um, and then we have new use cases, a couple of those, and I uh, looked at first at sections 3.1 through 3.5. Um, and if you look at these, these are uh, use cases are pretty heavily uh, dependent on data exchange things. But uh, the only API proposal I could find was RTC data channel and workers. We haven't done much with uh, data transport in service workers. Um, there aren't any proposals for low latency peer-to-peer -peer transport, which seems to be required by a bunch of these. Um, or, or and for that matter, what WG stream support in peer-to-peer -peer data transfer hasn't gone forward. Um, and there's no proposals that address the AR, VR, or metaverse a use case in section 3.5. Um, I would note that a bunch of these things have gone mass market. Certainly we have uh, quite a few of the low latency peer-to-peer -peer services out there in the game streaming arena, caching, um, that this use case does mention commercial uh, implementation. So it is quite real, uh, but we're not doing much uh, to, to address that just in terms of activity. Um, and then we have another set of use cases, 3.6, 3.7 and 3.8. Those we are, we do have quite a bit of uh, activity in the working group. So uh, Media Capture Transform is in that, uh, for example, uh, some of the work in some of the machine learning working groups relate to that. So quite a bit of W3C activity in these particular ones, although not for the case of uh, section 3.9, the reduced complexity signaling. Um, we've talked a little bit about some of the questions that remain. Uh, the machine learning workrooms are coming up to speed on some of the API proposals, including what WG streams. Um, so it's, I don't think we've quite answered the, some, all the questions there. Um, we don't have currently a proposal for the face and body tracking APIs, um, which is part of 3.6, although we will uh, have a presentation on this uh, in a minute or two. Um, and again, no proposals for the data exchange and service workers. Um, looking over section 3.8, which is about video conferencing, there is some security requirements which seem a little bit out of date. One of them is non-repudiation, which I don't think S-Frame actually provides. And another is the use of the term uh, perfect forward secrecy. And I think that term has gone out of use because there's no such thing as perfection in terms of forward secrecy. Um, so a, a few comments there. Um, so I, I want to open the discussion around a couple of the questions that I asked is, does this document reflect current industry priorities? You know, uh, everything that's gone on in the pandemic, does it reflect the diversity of, of uh, new things that we're doing? Does it reflect the current state of technology, in particular, the web codex, um, you know, approach to building apps? 
Um, and are we, in terms of whether we're on track to enabling these use cases, I'd have a couple of observations. It appears to me that no use cases have all the requirements met by API proposals. So there's, uh, if you're looking to implement any of these use cases using the APIs that we've been proposing, the answer is you can't implement any of them. Um, only four of the 11 use cases have any API proposals. Um, and that raises a question, you know, is it because we're not doing what we said we we're going to do, or maybe some of these use cases aren't compelling enough or don't have consensus. So uh, with respect to that, we could call for a consensus on some of the use cases and figure out if, if anybody's interested. Um, I would also note that there are some areas of recent interest like media ingestion that aren't covered. So maybe we have use cases that we don't care about and also there are use cases we do care about that aren't in the document, so that's possible. Um, but also in terms of the biggest gaps, I would note that uh, data transport is mentioned in seven of the 11 use cases, uh, but there are very few proposals. So that would include things, you know, ways to solve this would be uh, access to the RTP transport, which we don't have, or desire uh, impact uh, low level control of the data transport. And there's a bunch of use cases that mention this, including things like uh, control over the congestion control mechanisms, uh, the retransmission and, and details like that. Um, and the last question is, this document doesn't really talk about what the long-term architecture that we're moving towards is. So that goal I talked about, where are we trying to go? Are we trying to extend WebRTC? The document seems heavily oriented towards that. Um, but you know, given that we have web codecs, uh, are there alternative ways to get to the same place? Like, are we trying to do web codecs over the data channel or web transport or web codecs over RTP? It's, it's not at all clear to me um, what our long-term goal is uh, in this. So anyway, I'd like to open up a uh, discussion within the group, try to figure out um, the answers to some of these things. Uh, I guess we have Tim. Tim, you came in and out. Yeah, I had actually taken myself off the queue, but like I, I, a couple of things to say. I mean, I think um, so. I think one thing, one area you missed in the terms of the list of changes of, in the environment in the twenty-eight months or whatever is, I think, much more of this is happening on mobile than than was. I mean, certainly in my practice. A lot of people are using mobile for for the sorts of targets that we always used to assume was going to be laptop. And I don't think this document in any way reflects that. Um, and, and I think that that so that would be an additional kind of change. I would, and would you're talking about mobile in. mobile browsers. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. You know, no, that's and, definitely and, true know, in the in a lot of cases like game streaming. A lot of uh, a lot of the target is mobile browsers. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and but also you know people joining um, little small family conference video conferences, all sorts of things. There's a there's a ton of people who will do that happily on an iPad, but wouldn't get their laptop out for it, that sort of thing. So I think I think it it that's a big shift that I don't think this document reflects. And then I think the other thing at the other end of your your presentation, your, your question about the end is like, are we looking in the right direction? And I think. I think we're not going to be able to do that without trying to address the question of whether we're still interested in P2P or not. Like the, the initial design goal for, for WebRTC was that it was like everything you were going to do with it would be capable of using being used over peer-to-peer. -peer. And I mean, I think that's great. And for my practice, it's fantastic. But in reality, the kinds of things that we see being done with WebRTC a lot of them aren't, and and web transport simply isn't, and it isn't designed to be. And so I, I think we would need to be clearer about whether we're still trying to address both the star and the peer-to-peer -peer architectures, or whether we're going to say, hey, look, you know, web transport will do the star, and WebRTC will do the peer-to-peer, -peer, and then there's a bunch of APIs that they'll both share. Um, I, I think we need to think about that. Mm. Okay, uh, I think we have you in. Yeah, uh, thanks for the presentation, Bernard. Um, one, so what, what we're seeing 
uh, with web transport and so on is that uh, a lot of flexibility is given. And with Weber C, it's, uh, it's a really integrated system, which has benefit in terms of efficiency and, and so on. But clearly, it seems that people might have like uh, requirements and needs for some uh, opening. And some opening have, has been done. Um, and in some cases, uh, I, I don't see the benefit, like replacing codecs. I'm not sure I see the benefits. But uh, one case that I see is um, opening uh, uh, cases like metadata. Like if you're in a metaverse, uh, VR, right, AR, right. You, you want to have metadata synchronized. And that means that you, you need to somehow open the gate to RTP packets and RTP headers. And uh, I, I don't know. We, we have the use cases there. And it would be great if we would have proposals uh, in, in that area. Um, at generation, parsing, uh, like why should RTP header extensions be implement, fully implemented in, uh, in browsers for applications to use a particular RTP header extension? Uh, RTP header extensions are usually cheap. Um, so it's not like you, you need hardware RTP header extension implementations, for instance. So that, that would be something that would be good to have. Um, with regards to mobile browsers that Tim uh, mentioned, uh, I fully agree with that. And uh, if you look at um, iOS and Android, they're um, somehow different from uh, over OSs. And that should also arise, uh, like th this, sh this should surface somehow in browsers. And um, uh, it would be great if we had like more interop between iOS and Android at the browser level, for instance. And uh, one example I have is uh, when you have a phone call and the web page is capturing audio, then things are happening. Like typically, the phone call will take precedence and the, the web page will yes. will be muted. But the handling okay. of muting there is uh, is very different. And and that's an era which is user agent specific somehow, but it would be good if we could like provide guidelines and uh, progressively align in, in those areas. And maybe there are other areas that are specific to mobile browsers that we should also try to uh, to work on to make things more uh, consistent uh, between OSs yeah. and between browsers. Yeah, with respect to that um, mobility issue, you can, I, I get more complaints from developers about um, mobile platforms for a bunch of reasons. One is some of the things you mentioned, but the other is, you know, when developers tell me, hey, you guys are creating seven different APIs. Is it realistic for that same set of seven APIs to be implemented by every mobile device? And the answer is no, they're not, you're not going to get that on all different, you're going to get a different mixture of these APIs and that create makes the developer's life complete hell. Um, so it's better to have a smaller set of things that everybody's going to do than have a whole, you know, a bunch of APIs that you know will be on every desktop but won't be on every mobile device. Yeah. Uh, Harold, you're muted. So one of, one of the uh, things that is not immediately obvious is that there's a lot of stuff going on in uh, that uses the WebRTC implementation but doesn't isn't in the browser. Mm. Like I uh, had a complaint uh, only yesterday about a certain configuration change I made in uh, in my WebRTC implementation that affected ring doorbells. Mm. What? And uh, in frequent cases, uh, people want. Uh, the ability to set up connections to these WebRTC using thingies from a web browser. I have another complaint that, uh, well, I, my browser cannot talk to my infrastructure component that, that, that kind of looks like WebRTC but isn't. So there are a lot of ways of doing WebRTC. Or, we, or there are a lot of things that use WebRTC protocols. I do agree that uh, our our uh, use case driven approach seems to have not worked out very well for tracking what's going on. And uh, but uh, but yeah, and when when you want long term architecture, 
uh, that's often hard because either it means that we grow into the architecture I imagined yesterday, which can't adopt to the, adapt to the future, or it means that uh, you have to create the path as you walk it, which uh, frequently leads to an architecture that is hardly coherent. So, yeah, the reason I mentioned architecture, Harold, is if you're the, the document seems created with a mindset that we're going to extend to RGC, which seems to result in endless numbers of re extension requirements, which don't seem to be have generate a motivation on the browser vendors to actually do them, as opposed to the web codex approach, where the answer is yes, if you want this extension, go write it yourself, which seems much more likely to actually happen. Um, so that was why I brought up the architecture is, is it's it, the current approach seems to be piling up requirements that don't seem to meet the bar for the browser vendors. Um, yeah. A lot of them have been implemented uh, or in the other way that uh, extensions get, uh, get uh, proposed is uh, a browser vendor sees a small need writes up a proposal to satisfy that small need. And then up comes the working group to ask for that to be blessed as an extension. Hmm. I'm guilty of several of those, whether or not they fit the architecture or not. And it's a way of bringing the usability forward, but it doesn't lead to a coherent architecture. Yeah. Or, and it, especially it doesn't lead to evaluation of basic principles like, do we expose RTP? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and the other thing is it leads to the, some of the problems that Tim mentioned with the uh, mobile devices because you're then asking the mobile to implement these zillions of extensions that you're creating and the odds that you'll have them all seems low. Whereas if you're asking the mobile device to do, you know, two things, I want web codecs from you and I want RTP, that seems more likely to be satisfied than, you know, 15 different extensions. But that's just my opinion. It uh, uh, ANSI, I think, and then we're going to have to move on. But Yeah, yeah, thanks. So ANSI, Kosti, I mean, uh, web, art, uh, web Machine Learning Working Group Chair. Uh, so I, I wanted to wanted to let the group know that we're very much interested in working with you, Web Artist Working Group, to, to understand uh, uh, your use cases for NV better. And actually, Dom, uh, Dom opened a discussion recently in our group, and we're uh, we're building a prototype that integrates the media capture transform API, whatever it will be, or morph, <clears throat> morphs into, uh, and integrate that with a uh, web neural network API that is able to accelerate uh, inference of machine learning models. So, so Dom gave us a use case which was background blur. Um, so yeah, we, we hope to have some results that we can share with you and I will, I dropped a link to the IRC, to the GitHub issue. So if you have, uh, thoughts, suggestions, uh, metrics, we should track, uh, questions, whatever, let us know. So I, I think it's, uh, this is an interesting area and I, I like this, I, uh, this proposal that you've been, you've been baking recently, uh, with the what we do streams integration. So uh, there seems to be many moving parts still. So let's see how we can pull off this prototype. Uh, but yeah, we'll do our best. So that was my shameless plug. Thanks. Uh, Yanni Var, and then I think we're gonna cut the queue and move on to the next item. Yeah, just uh, two comments is that uh, I, I think apart from funny hats, it seems like most of these use cases have focused around peer connection. But uh, so with funny hats, it does uh, suggest it's also supposed to cover media capture. So I know, for example, uh, Elad's proposed a lot of interesting use cases uh, in the screen sharing space, for example. So it's definitely, I think it's the case that we have been working on things that maybe aren't covered in this document. So that might be need to update. Uh, my other was more of an editorial concern in that uh, I know Mozilla takes use cases pretty seriously. So uh, I see a couple of, use cases here have a note that says they have not completed a call for consensus. 
not just in the editor's draft, but also in a technical report because we do auto updating now. So I'm a bit concerned uh, that we perhaps uh, be a little more cautious about uh, um, what we include in the documents so that people don't uh, mistake. Uh, yeah, as you mentioned in the beginning of the meeting, there's some, uh, it can be confusing to people who read these documents. Yeah. So you're suggesting that we try to do a call for consensus on the items that, on the use cases? <clears throat> well, or, or remove them, uh, depending on what you would like to do. Okay, any other any other comments on this? Uh, I think we'll move to the next item. All right. Okay, so we now have uh, Riju talking about uh, face detection. Hi, thanks, uh, Bernard. So uh, I think your document of uh, the use cases were very useful because uh, in the funny hat section, I think in the next few months, I'll try to present at least four out of the uh, eight ones presented. So today uh, we'll talk about the face detection API. We presented in the um, WebRTC and we use cases uh, breakout session at TPAC last month. Uh, okay, next slide. Uh, yeah, the basic ask uh, was to make the API a bit more general and uh, forward looking and not and um, something for the future also as well and not getting fixated on only what the present platform APIs are giving. So I think now we have reworked the API and it's general enough and uh, we want to hear what features can be marked for future, something like that. So here we are with the reworked version of the face detection API. Uh, hopefully uh, some of you folks had the chance to look at the details I sent to the mailing list. Uh, here's the GitHub page link. Next, next slide. So I'll quickly go over the stuff in five minutes so that we keep majority time for discussion. So in short, the first ask, I think, I guess it was from Harald, was uh, instead of a bounding box, can we return a mask? Because that is something what Meet is doing. Uh, we tried to reason a bit. <laughs> and even though right now there's no platform API across all the OS uh, supporting a mask, we tried to accommodate the, this concept in this API by return, returning a contour. Uh, the number of points describing the contour can be user defined using a setting, let's say, you know, face detection num contour points. We can bike shit about naming later on. But yeah, um, the, and the implementation wise, what will happen is right now we can defo default to a, a four point rectangle. And maybe in future, if we can get a proper outline contour, we could, you know, this is sort of extensible. Um, because what happens is like uh, for normal face detection uh, in camera IPUs, the code in the driver runs a very efficient algorithm, very fast, quite accurate, no DNN stuff, sim a very simple uh, ML classifiers on CPU using um, SSEs or on maybe on GPUs also sometimes. But since the camera stack always runs this face detection every time for uh, AAA algorithm optimization, so uh, the algorithms are usually hard cascade or uh, uh, mean local binary pattern. So I'm talking about Chrome OS and uh, Windows specifically. The, uh, so this brings to my next point also. Uh, there was a comment about face mesh. Uh, I think TensorFlow and other ML frameworks are returning a quite a good like uh, high value. Six, 468 landmark face mesh. Uh, well, uh, most DNNs can return something similar uh, depending on the model. But from a practical point of view, uh, what's in the platform today 
and what is going to come in the next uh, next iteration next one year and almost two years so uh, uh, no platform apis are going to come up with face mesh unless you you know use a, a neural net framework so it, this is not going to be implemented in driver uh, in the next one uh, very near future. So uh, there's always a possibility of happening it, but uh, it's a bit far. Um, uh, but uh, still for the sake of extensibility, I'm, I mean, I, we have still kept the mesh as an option. We can, you know, remove it or add a note about implementation support, something like that, that I learned from you guys. So, yeah, uh, landmark, so, okay. Uh, so there is also a talk about this face landmark set uh, that is uh, sort of supported by all platforms now. Uh, next slide. Yeah, there should. Yeah. So normally face detection mode, uh, uh, usually people say fast, accurate, normal, sort of enum. But here I've we have tried to make it like face detection on and off, like none or presence, off and on, uh, contour or mesh, whether it returns me a contour or maybe it can return a mesh uh, depending on uh, underlying driver support. Uh, yeah, so the extensibility is up for discussion. So, so regarding face, uh, expression uh, blink and smile are some are something like which are universally supported across all platforms so uh, but i've added a few more uh sorry uh, previous slide please yeah thanks so i've added a few more like anger disgust fear these kind of things which you know these are optional why i added it is i could do these things without using dnn stuff so using simple uh, classifiers on top of the, um, the hard cascade or something like that. So, so these things are still uh, in the realm of possibility to be implemented within drivers in the uh, near future. So, uh, I mean, we can restrict them like every other enum. We can restrict them a bit, but uh, what we have tried is to give you all the options and then maybe we can uh, remove something so that uh, yeah yeah but uh, yeah i'll open up for discussions now i think that's the most important part why uh like uh, to all especially Haral does the contour sound good uh yeah here it is please uh let's start the discussions Did any? Uh, yes. Yeah, we've got Harold and then Tim in the queue. Uh, yeah, yeah. Neil, are you on queue in the queue first? Or was that the previous queue? Uh, previous one. That was the previous queue. Yeah, so Harold, you're up. Yeah, so contour sounds a good bit better than, uh, than leaving it a square because, as you know, uh, and anything that is doing uh, things like background blur is not yes. using a square. And, yes. Uh, I, I do worry about the way you're thinking, uh, phrasing this in strictly in terms of drivers, because uh, I would want to approach it from the other end and say that uh, if a media stream has this, media stream track has this information in it, I want a way to get at it. And I don't, and as a consumer of the track, I don't care how it got there. And uh, as a producer of the track, I want to be able to add that information as, an, as a form of annotation to the video frame. Right. So, uh, so I would like to see if we can 
I would like to imagine an API where we where we can can have uh, production or consumption or re even refinement of the of of the of the inform of the annotation of the video track being yeah. passed along. Right. So that, for instance, you could do a media stream track feeds into a processor, and media the media stream track carries the box because that's what the driver knows how to do. Mm -hmm. And the media stream track uses that as a hint to initialize its own uh, contour detection algorithm, uh, adds the contour as media metadata to the stream and pass it, pass it on. So um, I kind of like the, the shape you're looking at now because it has a fair amount of the right sort of metadata, but I'm I'm worried about the the way that it's described as a as a one way thing. Okay. Only only for consumption and not the production side. R right. Go so, on. Okay. Shall I answer or later on? Uh, so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah, please answer. So the yeah the background blur uh, part uh, uh, maybe in the. Uh, early January, I'll try to present uh, the entire background blur and uh, replacement uh, stuff because uh, we are, uh, as I showed you the demo, how we are working on it, uh, it's still a bit of work in progress. Um, yes, you, I understood your point that you wanted uh, phase detection and then as a so you wanted that when we do background blur, you do the phase detection and take over the you know value which phase detection did. But the way we are trying to do is this is free of computation. Uh, uh, like uh, when your camera is on, if it's in auto mode, this already happens in the driver. So I think... Uh, Yes, uh, Tim, please. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I, I second Harold's thing that I think it would be it would be nice to be able to use this API to do successive refinement um, uh, of of the you know it's great to have it for free and computation free, but then we're going to want to layer in another layer of computation, you know, in 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 something else, some other API that's in the browser to do that. Um, but my other point was I'm nervous about the inclusion of um, the expression enum. Okay. Uh, the, the, the others are, are reasonably factual, and that is a very much a subjective value judgment. And, and I, uh, I think it, it kind are of you, doesn't sit comfortably there somehow. Sure. Are you, are you, uh, worried about the list, or are you you do not want it at all because blink and smile are across all platforms? Or are you do you want to restrict the list, or you want to get it off? I, I'm worried about them being um, either wrong uh, in, and possibly were, uh, even more yeah. likely wrong. Um, more wrong for different subgroups, uh, population groups. So right. you know that there right. these these things are famously inaccurate for particular subgroups or or yes. for particular yes. use cases, and so I, I the more subjective the the API point, the more that worries me. Yes, uh, I agree that uh, it does depend on a few things about the training. Yeah, okay, um, we can we can keep a note that this is something. UN. I think Yoniva is first. Oh, sorry, Yoniva. Uh, <clears throat> yes, uh, excuse me. So apologies if this was covered, but I'm trying to remember what we agreed to to, to work on when it came to this topic of face detection mm -hmm. from last meeting. Um, and the state, what is the status of what you're presenting and what are you asking the working group for? Right, so uh, last time I, Put up in image capture, and then there was a uh, UN or 
somebody commented that we should move this to the media capture extension. So we have sort of, there was that, this was a logistic ask. Another one ask was make it a bit more general. Uh, that was my understanding. So uh, uh, I, I might have made it a bit too general, but I'm trying to maybe throw out stuff, uh, what people do not like. And then uh, we can put up a peer in the uh, extension spec, media capture extension spec. And then, uh, I mean, of course, uh, uh, Chromium and Edge implementation would follow. Yeah, uh, and mm -hmm. just process-wise, I think at some point we need to, uh, I think you need to ask the working group to adopt this or not. So I'm a little concerned right. that oh, we work on APIs that are managed outside of the working group. Okay, so um, uh, the media capture extension is not a correct place for this? I think that would be a good place uh, to okay. discuss it. I, I don't know if there's been any issues opened or uh, uh, not yet. It, uh, so, but we can definitely open, uh, put up right away. I just wanted to, before putting up the PR, I just wanted to know whether, uh, check the pulse, whether it's okay or not. Uh, I mean, the PR is, would be ready next day. All right, so, so this is a future proposal? Yeah. Uh, Okay. Um, right. Um, yeah, uh, I'm also a little uh, wondering about how to deal with this as well. Okay. Uh, please uh, let me know uh, how to like uh, deal with it. So. I, I welcome feedback from others in the working group as well. Okay. Bernard. Yeah, I, uh, I I think this is pretty interesting, but I also shared Tim's concerns about the emotion analysis. Okay. Um, I've been involved in several studies of that, and I do think we see different uh, accuracies with different populations. Yes. So that that could be a that could be a concern. Um, I guess uh, I also would want to uh, talk about uh, the the way in which this would be used. Um, it's uh, basically, it, it's an interface on media stream track, but I think uh, the, uh, m in my mind, the, the question is, this I think is used to be, uh, designed to be used along with uh, media capture transform. So the way I think of this is, is potentially part of a transform stream uh, that you might be developing to do the background blur, for example. Yeah. Um, and so, um, you know, uh, at least the way I think of it in my mind is I've got this video frame potentially that's in a GPU buffer, and I guess the machine learning folks will tell us on how yeah. to do the how to do the processing quickly. But um, I'm getting information here that would potentially help feed into that background blur uh, model and help make it execute faster. I guess that's, um, and uh, I guess my my question is, you know, uh, the the information that's provided, for example, the contours and, and so forth, is it's designed to help me process this thing that's in the GPU buffer. Um, and I guess one of my concerns is, is particularly in going, uh, effects see performance effects that might be created I'm, I'm presuming this these mm -hmm. dictionaries are operating in main memory and I've got this GPU and switching back and forth and validating caches and stuff like that yeah so performance wise I can tell you a few things so if you run on Chrome OS uh, KB Lake um, mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah uh, if you understood that I forgot the model number and if you run on uh, the uh, not yet released Windows ones mm -hmm. uh, for the phase detection uh, in those are working on CPU using SSE. Uh, uh, it it uh, the the library name is called PVL. You can and they are working they are working on CPU 
without mm -hmm. any DNNs. So uh, the GPU memory you're talking about won't affect there as of now. Of course, in future, there are versions coming out where uh, where uh, there is a possibility that permitting uh, something will be done on GPU. And of course, in more future, there are other uh, accelerators, obviously. Uh, uh, I so if your if your uh, concern is uh, um, performance, uh, I we can do some metrics, and I think I can show that this would be one of the most performant one yeah. in terms I of phase detection. My question for the API mm. shape is right. right now it's it's an extension to the media stream track interface. Yes. And what I'm saying is I'm thinking of of you know the the, the machine learning the background mm. blur, and I it seems to me like I want this to work in fact on a video frame. Right. Like basically, what I'm looking at is I'm I, I'm I've got this video frame that's come out of. Media Capture Transform, I want to give it to you and you give me back the contour and then I'm going to go and use that in my... Yes, uh, right? yes, I understood. So it, if I, yeah, if, uh, so if I uh, try to uh, show up a background blur on media stream track with uh, like very good performance, will that convince the group? Well, I guess my, my question was more is is it a, is this an API that mm -hmm. extends media stream track or is it is it something that I operate on a video frame with? That's, that's I, I think yeah, media stream track only. That was okay. the point. If, if I if I may jump in jump in, yeah. I had yeah. like very similar uh, feedback to Bernard and right. uh, to to me, the thing is you have driver data that you want to expose, yes. and the decision to expose should be at media stream track level. Like, yeah, I want to opt in into getting uh, this phase detection from the driver. So please generate it. Now, the generated data should not be on media stream track. It should be okay. uh, synchronized with uh, video frames. So right, either right. it should be, okay. uh, um, either you can get it from the video frame itself or it should be, uh, you, you should be able to get it whenever you get a new video frame uh, through Media, uh, media Capture uh, Transform. Um, so, uh, so this model makes sense to me. Um, the other comment I had was that it's good to, given the idea is to expose driver information, it's good to, uh, to be as specific and uh, as possible and there are things in that the driver is already generated, and that's what we want to uh, describe. Uh, once the application has it, they can use like a generic metadata uh, mechanism, like to attach metadata to video frames and pass it on to further transform and so on. But uh, we we can separate the, the issues, and if we look only at the driver specific exposure, then we should be specific and not, and we should not try to generalize too much. Because if we are generalizing too much, it, it, it will become very hard. So I, I would look at what drivers are producing now and try to describe that. And application specific will produce mask or, or whatever from it. Right. OK. So we can remove the mask part as of now or add a note or something like that, like, like something. Hmm. Okay, so we have four minutes left. I just want to make sure we capture the action items and next steps uh, mm -hmm. for what we're uh, what we're going to do. Um, so, what what are the next steps? Um, um, well, I was thinking next step. Uh, I could show you some. I, I think I showed you some demo and how it works. Or um, Maybe I can get some numbers, performance numbers, or something like that. And I think what Harald is telling is use the phase detection as a pipe to background blur. Uh, I'm, I, I will try to experiment with that part. And I will try to also put up a pure background blurs. Um, 
and uh, try to get some numbers from there. So, and, uh, we, we do, what, what I'm hearing yeah. isn't so much the pipe to Baron Blur, but more of an architectural point that um, the data should be exposed at the frame level. Uh, and yeah. that okay. uh, can then be repurposed for bug and blur or for any other kind of uh, transform. So uh, I think okay. it's th that seems to be the most consistent feedback I've heard uh, across. Uh, okay, so uh, it has to be to, so which interface, sorry, I uh, missed it. Uh, which interface I should be looking at then, like instead of media stream track? So you, you want to look at the not yet adopted media capture transform proposal, I guess, uh, okay. and web codex uh, to right. get the, the right hooks for, for your work. Um, yeah. Does that mean he has to raise the issue in uh, in web codex? The, the, the problem is the problem is the problem is of course I have done a few uh, written some stuff for web codex and all those things, but this one was not related to web codex. So, uh, uh, yeah. So it, it, should, it is related should... to video frame, which is currently owned by web codex. Okay. But we, so... we can certainly extend these objects. I think we should get the discussions in media capture extensions and try to uh, precise the architecture points there and which points should like for each point, we should file another issue and, and dig, in, in, dig into those. And uh, so have you filed, I, I think you filed an issue on, on GitHub Media Capture Extensions, and we should probably take the time to provide the feedback we gave, uh, at least okay. the architecture points and describe them properly so that you can right. work on them. So I put up an image capture and you put, asked me to put in uh, extensions media. Uh, I can do it this week like tomorrow we can put it in so that we get the uh, feedback. And so we do, to be clear, it's a, an issue, not a pull request that I think is being requested. Okay, we can put up an issue. And uh, yeah, we can put up an issue and put up as a pull request also, you don't have to accept and uh, yeah, for discussion. It's, <clears throat> sorry, is this issue 289? We could probably transfer it for you. Yes, it is. If you issue, it is issue two eighty nine, and uh, and uh, would you prefer the, if we transfer it, or do you want to create a new one? Uh, anything. Uh, okay. Yeah, anything. Uh, and uh, we have a sort of me, uh, if if we go back one two slides before, uh, I, uh, we have a document uh, we have a link to the yeah arrows github page where we have explained everything against media capture extension so if you link open that page it should... okay so we are a bit out out of time so sorry for that but uh yeah mm, looking forward i have for... transferred the issue by the way okay thanks uh, I can have a look at video frames. Uh, so, uh, and yeah, I'll have a look at video frames if it fits there. Uh, uh, we'll try out the POC and move it a bit to fit there. And maybe I'll come back and give you implementation feedback. Okay. Well, I think we're out of time, and so I'd like to thank everybody for uh, attending, and we're going to have our December meeting, um, and so if you have uh, agenda requests, please, please get those in. Thank you, everybody. Thank okay. You. See you later. Bye. Bye. And uh, stop the recording.